The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, clients of GT247.com, and welcome to MetaTrader 5. In this webinar, I'm going to be taking you through our new operating platform. If you're still looking to sign up and download the platform, head over to the Purple Group YouTube page, where we've got a playlist of MetaTrader videos that will help if you need assistance with the initial stages of registration. Our YouTube page also has a list of short videos that cover placing trades, using the charts, and other topics that I'm going to go over today. So let's get started. MT5 is the more advanced successor to MT4. It's not backwards compatible, so if you have any custom indicators on MT4 that you'd like to move across, they need to be recoded for MT5. Starting off with how the system looks, I'm currently using my colleague Brian's MetaTrader system and he's got a few trades on the go already. You can see those down here. These are just some demo trades just to show everyone how the platform works. Great, so let's take a tour. You've already registered your account on gt247.com, you've been given an account number, you've downloaded the platform, and you're now logged in. And so this is typically the screen that you're going to see once you've set that all up. What I'm going to go through today is a brief overview of the four main windows inside of the platform, how to do some trades, how to place orders, and then I'll answer some questions. So the four main windows, we've got the market watch, the navigator, the toolbox at the bottom, and then our charts that are in the center over here. So starting off with the navigator. The navigator allows for switching between accounts and provides functions for running trading robots and indicators. It's got a list of applications that you can purchase from the MT market and you download it from the code base. From the navigator, you're going to be able to toggle between your live and your demo account. And as we can see, the live account has got a gold icon and the demo account has got a green icon. So simply to toggle between those accounts, I would just double click on the account that I want to log into and click OK. Now I'm just taking a look down and see what else is in here. We've got our indicators. Indicators most uh, traders will know as a study uh, if you were using the previous system with GT247, but on MetaTrader they call it an indicator. Some very popular ones that you'll know of, uh, MACD, Relative Strength Index RSI, and the Stochastic Oscillator. And when I want to use those, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a chart that I like, or of a symbol that I want to use. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to introduce it to the chart. And I'll show you more on that later. So that's the indicators. Then we've got Expert Advisors. Expert Advisors are mechanical trading systems that allow complete automation of analytical and trading activities. So it allows you to perform a prompt technical analysis of price data and place a trade uh, without having to do any manual work. Then just taking a look here at our favorites, what we can do with our favorites is uh, it allows us to add our favorite indicators, as the name suggests, uh, allows you to add the indicators, add scripts, accounts, and experts onto one list so you can easily access them. Next, I want to take a look at the market watch. So previous traders using the uh, GT247 system will know the market watch as the product navigator. So right now, I've got four instruments on my market watch, gold, NASPERS, the VIX, and pound dollar. Uh, there's a few ways that I can introduce new instruments to my market watch. The simplest way is just to click and add them. So if I want to bring up a stock such as MTN, I can start by typing in MTN, and already MTN just pops up pre-populated, and I can select it and introduce it to my market watch. The same goes for an index. So let's try the FTSE, introduce that, and a forex pair, maybe like the euro dollar. Great, so I can really simply introduce new symbols or products or 
instruments to my market watch uh, through a click to add system. Another thing I can do is on the top of the screen in one of the toolbars here, I've got my show symbol list, and I can also access that by clicking Control U together. And so right away, I bring up a window that has all of the symbols located inside of it. So you can see on the left hand side here, I've got international markets and local markets, and then I can go into the subcategories. If, for example, I want to look at just local equity, and I want to introduce all of the equities, if I want, so I can easily search between them. Select, press Shift, go down, and I can grab all of the local equities. Once done, I click Show Symbol, and OK. And now you'll see in my market watch, I've introduced all of the local equities. All right, so they are all there. My market watch also has a timestamp on it, and you'll notice that the timestamp is for GMT. So it's going to be two hours behind. The reason why it's done that way is so there's uniformity across all the markets with regards to the time uh, and numbers coming through. The next thing I'm going to take a look at is the toolbox at the bottom of the page here. This is going to be the most important thing for you whilst trading. I just want to quickly hide the um, taskbar at the bottom of my screen. If you give me a moment. Okay, great. So I've just moved my uh, toolbar at the bottom. So we're taking a look at the toolbox now. Now you'll see you've got trade. This shows you your open trades as well as pending orders. Currently, I don't have any pending orders. It shows me my exposure to date, my trade history, news that we can feed through to you, my MetaTrader mailbox. It allows me to log in directly to the GT247 website. I can see the market and see the type of uh, indicators and experts that I can buy uh, through the code base. I can set alerts. I can introduce uh, signals, custom signals that we can buy ourselves or create ourselves. Um, this is something that Brian made, called it the Max Profit Maker, hasn't started using it yet, but it's just based on a demo account. Then you've got the code base, uh, which has got hundreds and hundreds of pages of information on different types of indicators and expert advisors. You've got the experts that you have introduced. So in this case, Brian's introduced a traditional MACD. And then you've got your journal, shows you what's happening on your system, if you're logged in, and so on. Next, I'm going to take a look at uh, the charts. So by default, you can have four charts set up on MetaTrader. Uh, that's all accessed through this button on the toolbar. If you only are interested in looking at one of those charts, I can maximize it. So I've got my NASPERS chart, quite easily be able to delete indicators and so on. And if I want all my charts back up, simply press that button again. I minimized uh, the gold chart, so it's sitting down here, but I can bring it up and bring four charts back together. And then if I just want to see two charts side by side, here I've got the VIX, pound dollar, next door to each other. Quite an interesting thing and something that I personally like is that um, you can save templates on the charts. So different styles can be accessed through the properties. So if I open up this gold chart, it's currently a trade going on on the chart. Uh, maybe a little bit too busy. Let's take a look at the, this pound dollar chart. So no trades going on. If you want to introduce a different style, 
different color scheme, simply right click on the chart, scroll down to properties. And here's where you'll be able to introduce a grid, take out the grid, change the background colors, and so on. So you can also customize that chart instead of having to press right click, instead of having to right click and then press properties, you can also just press F8 and it's going to be, and will summon that uh, context menu to customize your chart. When you are satisfied with the style of chart, you would want to save that as a template. So you can have multiple different styles that you want to use, but simply to save as a template, right click, move down to templates, click save templates. And if there's a particular style that you like to use, simply save it as default. I've already got this saved as default, but you would just type in default and save it. And that then, every new chart that you open will have that same style. I also like to use um, drawing tools on the charts. It's one of the really good features about MT5. And it's got a great set of drawing tools. Uh, in this toolbar, I can see all my drawing tools, and I've already introduced two custom drawing tools. I've got a mini chart as well as the arrowed line. So the way I got that is I simply right-clicked on this toolbar, click Customize, and here you can see all the different drawing tools that you can introduce to your toolbar. And so if you want to introduce this triangle, simply click Insert. I'm going to take it out. just want to show everyone this uh, mini chart that I inserted earlier. It's quite cool. Uh, with the mini chart, I can, whilst looking at a, a main chart here on the pound dollar in a time frame set up for, let's put it as one hour, I can now introduce a mini chart and I can change the time, maybe look at a five minute chart right there on um, the pound dollar. I can put that anywhere on the screen that I like. And it just gives me a, a clearer indication um, where I can then view the one hour chart and the five minute chart at the same time. Or I could then put in a gold chart and a dollar yen chart at the same time. Now, when it comes to introducing indicators, what I would simply do is move over to the navigator, find the indicator that I want to use, pinch it, and drop it down onto my new chart. And there it goes. Just gonna remove that very quickly, deleting indicators window. What I also would like to show you is that you can also create hotkeys for indicators that you use frequently. So to do this, all that I need to do is right click on the indicator that I want to use, click set hotkey, I would then scroll to that specific indicator, and then I'm going to select the key that I want to use. Then to use the hotkey, all I'm going to do is press Alt and the key that I've chosen. Now I can try and do that. And it's going to bring up my relative strength index straight away, and I can introduce it to the chart. Just going to remove that quickly. If you want to introduce other indicators, you can also go through to mql5.com, where they've got 74 pages of indicators for MT5 from the code base. Or you can just head over to the code base uh, under the expert advisors or scripts here. Great, so that's done. Now I'm going to take a look at executing trades and orders on the platform. So there's multiple ways that you can open a position on MetaTrader. Uh, the simplest way that I'm going to start off with is the click to trade on the charts. So you'll notice there's some icons on the top left of your chart. You can open that up and automatically bring up a quick buy 
quick sell trading uh, screen. Um, you can change your volume or your risk. Um, so previously with GT247, we would have known this as the risk. Now on MetaTrader, we know it as the volume. Something to be aware of is that if I'm trading uh, something like a equity CFD, just going to introduce that onto the chart. So here I've got MTN. Previous users of EQ Trader will be familiar with trading in shares. However, users of uh, Future Trader who are used to doing mini CFDs are used to trading in rands per point. So in this case, the risk or the volume is based in shares when trading equities and trading uh, rands per point when trading commodities, currencies, and indices. So right now, if I put up a volume of one, I'm only looking to buy or sell one share in MTN. So quite easily, I could change that number, put it to 100 shares, and I'm just going to click buy. Let me actually move it to 10. Don't want Brian to have too large of exposure to MTN. So I've hit buy. And um, automatically, uh, you can see I've introduced uh, MTN now to my um, platform, and I can see the profit I'm making. There is no automatic stop loss or take profit introduced, and so I would now need to go and modify that position to introduce a stop loss or take profit. So I'm going to right click on MTN, I'm then going to click modify, and this is where I can change my stop loss and take profit. What's quite exciting with MetaTrader 5 is that although you can then go ahead and put in a manual stop loss level, so currently we are at 130 Rand 16 cents was the buy, I might want to look to get out anywhere below 120 Rand. Another thing I could do is simply change the number of points between the market and where my stop loss is. And so I could go and put in a 2,000 point stop loss or a 500 point stop loss. And the same applies for the take profit. I could go and either enter a manual take profit or a, I can put in the number of points I'm looking to make and put in there 1,000 points. Hit modify and straight away my MTN trade now has a stop loss and a take profit level. Next thing I can look at doing is putting in a full trade ticket. So if I'm placing it on MTN, find MTN, right click, click new order, and leave it on market execution. I'd then be able to put in my 10 shares on MTN. And currently I've already got that stop loss and take profit set up, but I could change it. I can even leave a comment. And so in the comments, I can just put in here, webinar, and I'm going to hit buy at the market. Great. So what I've done now is I'm actually exposed to 20 shares at the moment. Um, on Future Trader, that would be the equivalent of 20 cents per point. And my comment, webinar, shows up on the right-hand side. The more complicated thing to use on MetaTrader is the order system. It is slightly different to what we previously did with GT247. So the first thing to do is to find my instrument that I'd like to trade or place an order on, right click, click new order, and switch from market execution to pending order. Now, orders on MetaTrader versus GT247. So you'll see these order types, and there's a whole lot of them. There's a limit order, there's a stop order, and there's a stop limit order. So I'm going to go over this uh, buy limit. So the buy limit is identical to our buy order that you were used to on GT247. It's essentially a trade request to buy at the ask price that is equal to or less than specified in the order. So the current price level is higher than the value specified in the order. Usually this order is then going to be placed in anticipation of the security price falling below a level and then increasing. So it's really to try and buy a stock or buy an instrument at a bargain price.
the buy stop. This is identical to our break order previously on the GT247 system. So it's a trade order to buy at the ask price when it's equal to or greater than the specified price in the order. So the current price level will be lower than the value specified in the order and the order is typically placed in anticipation that the price is going to reach a certain level in the future. Then the sell limit, um, this is just a simple sell order. Uh, so a trade order to sell at the bid price, uh, which is equal to or greater than uh, the one specified in the order. So if the current price level is lower than the value specified in the order, uh, usually this order would be placed in anticipation that the security price is going to increase to a certain level and then fall back down and you want to try and short it. Then we've got the sell stop. Now this is essentially a selling break order. So it's really a trade to sell at the bid price when that uh, particular price is equal to or less than the one specified in the order. So usually this type of order is placed in anticipation of a security price reaching a certain level and then continuing to fall. So let's um, place those, uh, those stop losses and take profits on our MTN. We've already done it and we can actually visually see where our stop loss is and where our take profit is. We're actually getting fairly close to... Um, to, uh, that's actually just our entry, it's not our take profit level. Let me just adjust uh, our take profit level so I can see it on the screen at the same time. No, still not there. No, oh, it's because I changed it on the wrong instrument. Apologies. Okay, great. So if you're looking at the chart now, you can see this line up at the top, that's my take profit level, and this line right at the bottom is my stop loss. I can then pinch and grab that line to change where it's located. That's now my new stop loss level, and that's my new take profit level. The other type of order we have is a buy stop limit. If I open up MTM again, new order, pending order, buy stop limit and sell stop limit. So this is quite different and it's like nothing that we had previously on GT247. Uh, what it does is it combines a break order and the buy order together. So first a break order price or a higher price has to be triggered before a buy order at a lower price is then initiated. And the same goes for the sell order. It's the opposite of the buy stop and it requires a sell break order to trigger below before a self um, sell order is initiated. The next thing I wanted to quickly take a look at is uh, volume and really what it is is the difference between lots and amounts. So where I can find that is in our instrument specifications. So I'm going to right click on my instrument and I'm going to hit specification and here I can find out everything that I want to see on MetaTrader uh, to do with MTN. So what's quite important, you can see the name, you can see the currency that I traded in and I can see the margin requirements. So here I can see 12.5% And I can also get the uh, times and dates that are, the trading is happening. Here is where I can see my volume. So I can go between 0 and 5,000 shares with a step of 1 share. So really what we want to know is that with lots, that's a traditional rands per point, And the amount would be the actual number of contracts that we buy. 
If you have any questions, please send them through to us now so I can then try and answer them before the end of this session. All of the questions that we answer will be hosted on our blog. We'll put up a FAQ section from the, the questions from this webinar, as well as the answers. So if you can't make it all the way through to the end, you're welcome just to watch the follow-up video or read our blog. The other thing I wanted to quickly look at is just some shortcuts around the charts. So if I hit Control and F6, what it does is it allows me to switch between my charts. Really simply, really quickly. The other thing I'd like to take a look at quickly is on uh, the uh, next page over here. So I'm just seeing a question coming through. I'll answer that at the end. Hold on for me one moment. Okay, I've just been asked to place a pending instruction. So let's do it on gold. You can see my gold chart over here. Ah, gold is already trading. Let's try something fresh. Um, I haven't traded anything on the S&P 500. So I'm just going to introduce that as a symbol. Go to international markets. Go to index. Find my S&P 500. Show my symbol. Okay. Scroll down to S&P 500. Well, I can quite simply call it up. There's my S&P 500. Introduce the new chart. Quite a, um, a gap that had formed at the open. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is place a pending instruction uh, to go long on the S&P 500 should it break uh, these new highs. So I press new order, start off on the S&P 500, go to pending order. I'm going to have this as a break order, so I'm going to go to buy stop. I'm going to work this in at 5 Rand per point. I then want to give a price that I want this to trigger at. So what I do, go and look at the prices in the market. I think what we'll do, price is currently at 26.33. I'm going to move my pending instruction to trigger at 26.80. My stop loss is then introduced manually, and I'll put that in at 25.83. Point five. Add in a comment. Webinar S and P trade and I can also change the expiry of this particular pending order. can go ahead and I can put in a um, price for pretty much anything here. I've already got my stop loss 
I think I'm going to leave the take profit for now. Um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put a, a, quite a high one in. Let's put a 2000. Okay, let's place that order. Great. So down here, you can see I've placed that buy stop order, and we're waiting for that 2680 level to be breached first. Okay, that's it for today. If you do have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. My name is Martin. You can find me at mharris at gt247.com. M for Martin, H for Hotel, A for Apple, double R for Romeo, I for India, S for Sugar at gt247.com. I hope that this has helped you a lot. Uh, please, as I said, don't be afraid to contact us if you need some assistance. And I hope that you can have a profitable trading day. Thank you very much.